How's the economy? You've got a series of businesses through the US economy at the moment, worldwide for that matter as well. What do you see? You know, I, I agree with Solomon. It's kind of chugging along. Our businesses are doing well. Record, un, record low unemployment in the US. Uh, we've, had, we've had kind of an oil dividend for six or seven years now. You know, oil is very cheap, energy is very cheap. Uh, and so planes are full, you know, restaurants are yeah. full, and things are going pretty well. What's the scale meter right now for Bain Capital? The, everybody's out there, we gotta scale this, scale that. Define scale and what it means for you. Well, we, we really try to just do the best transactions available. We don't wanna be the biggest, we wanna be the best. Uh, we have uh, about $105 billion of assets today. We think that brings us an advantage because we're a global firm. We actually stem from a consulting firm, we weren't really financial people. And the belief was back in 1984, from started with Bill Bain and Mitt Romney in that we could take the consulting skills and really transform business. Right, this is a really important point. I'm gonna state this and you tell me if I'm wrong, you're not slaves to internal rate of return. You're looking at it from a different view, explain that. Well, we try to take a long-term perspective and, and the beauty of the model and why the model I think generally has grown yeah. so fast is that we don't have to have quarterly earnings, we can invest in new products, invest in new software, um, don't have that kind of pressure. So. Private equity has grown from, I don't know, 10 or 12 companies back when I started to 4,000 companies and is a very significant factor in the economy right now and has a real place in the economy because the business model is working the, of kind of owner operators working in concert with management to build great companies. That's the bottom line. Well, let's talk about the business model because it often comes under fire from a lot of people, as you know quite well, Steve. I'm just wondering how is, it is sustainable at the moment given that there's so much more money in your industry compared to, say, where, there were, where we were 20, 30 years ago. Well, it's really interesting. I did an interview in 1989 yeah. where I, that was the exact same statement. Same question. Um, and then I did one in 99, it was the same statement. And 2000. Where do you think Farrell got it from? <laughs> <laughs> You're a good, good learner. And it's a legitimate question. But what's happened from, in the industry is in, in, in 89, it was mainly USA, and then it expanded in, 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 the, in the 90s in, into global, and then it expanded in technology and medicine and other products. And so the, the ability to kind of put money to work and be global has expanded the industry. So I actually think there's a lot of money out there, yeah. but the returns in private equity are still world class because the model has worked. Let's talk projects, patient capital, getting together public private in Italy cruise ships, Richard Branson, all sounds very exotic What are you fancy. talking about? This is something you guys are doing right well, now. Well, we're really excited. Uh, uh, Richard came to us about four years ago, uh, my partner Ryan Cotton and I, and uh, said he wanted to start a brand new cruise line. It was gonna be different from everyone out there. And uh, we went on that journey with him. It's been a great partnership. And right now, the first boat being built in Italy is gonna be delivered to the US and will start sailing out of Miami. And this is in partnership in with the Italian government? Yes, uh, the, the Italian government is into job creation, and these boats create a lot of jobs, and so there's a, they give you a financing package. So our 750 million equity plus a 2.2 billion financing package okay. has increased in what's gonna, general. What's gonna be the architectural or experiential distinction of this boat versus the other boats that are the stereotype of the industry? Yeah, these are very unique boats. It's gonna be uh, all adult, first of all, the only cruise line that's, that's all adult. And then it has that Richard Branson touch. Is this like Love Island on the water? I, I it's going to be know. amazing. Be know, a... Steve knows what Love Island is. <laughs> I, don't I don't know what Love, Love Island is. Could <laughs> you, you know please what, explain to our radio you and know television what office? Love Island is. <laughs> Love Island is a reality show. You don't want to go there. Never Love Island, but uh, <laughs> uh, we are going to have a, a kind of a private island experience in, in Bimini with the cruise. And the boats are designed so there's huge outside yeah. spaces, hammocks, yeah. restaurants, clubs. It's going to be incredible. The, the, the interview with you, Steve, is always with a shift of basketball at the end. And we talk light about it. But this is really serious. And I'm going to give an example here with some lightness in respect of Mr. Stern. The giant has died in basketball, but it's all of sport. John Farrow's AC Milan is so bad, they've got to go out and spend a lot, a lot of money yeah. on talent. Mr. Stern invented that with the NBA with Mr. Jordan. Explain what David Stern did to the economics and the aspiration of salary in the sport. Well, David was a huge visionary, uh, uh, not only in terms of introducing uh, the 50-50 player split and a salary cap, which is fair to everybody, uh, but being way out ahead of the game, uh, going to China you know, 14, 15 years ago, going to, going to Europe, having international offices. At that time, many of the NBA owners were saying, hey, we're spending a lot of money and there's no basketball. His view is basketball would be a world game, it would expand, it would expand viewership, and that vision became fulfilled. He was unique in that 
he, had, he was a visionary, but, but also a micromanager. So he was into every detail of the NBA to make sure it was running well, great for fans. And he, he'll be really missed. It was a sad day at his funeral on Tuesday. Steve, you're co-owner of the Celtics. Your friends are into European football. Mr. Henry over at Liverpool, Mr. Pallotta over at Roma in Italy. How much harder is it to make it in European football, just in terms of how the franchise is run compared to, say, something like basketball in America? Well, they've done a fantastic job uh, uh, over there, and, and Roma has really contended and hadn't contended before, and John Henry has a fantastic team that they've built. The structure is a lot more difficult than the USA sports structure because there really is not any salary controls, um, and, and you can get relegated, so somebody can pay a lot of money for a franchise and then be in the minor leagues. So it, it introduces a new level of risk, so you have to be really on top of those clubs and, and, and really... Uh, manage those well, tightly so you don't take too many risks. Should we relegate in American sports to provide a new tension? I don't think so. Uh, you know, the great news right now is in, in both American football, in basketball, there's incredible parity. Yeah. So any, there's many teams that can win the NBA championship. I hope it's going to be the Celtics, yeah. but there are many teams really? that can win that championship. So, so now, there's, there's been competitive tension right. in these cities, and, and I think relegation is just a pressure that's not needed. The Patriots in the Super Bowl, how's it look? Not very good. <laughs> Next year. Can you no. give us a call on the Super Bowl coming up here in a bit? Uh, I, think, uh, I think that um, the 49ers look good, but Kansas City looks like a very, very strong team. And, and it's a younger team, and it's more dynamic. I mean, that game is changing with a gentleman from Kansas City, isn't Absol it? Absolutely. They, they look pretty devastating to me, and uh, uh, so it should be really fun. How will bas what's the style of basketball that's going to change? They're going to ram the, the three-point line out further? I don't think so. I think the fans like it the way it is now. The, the big changes in the game have been introducing mo yeah. more mobility and ability to shoot that three, and it's been very exciting.